So, um, I think we're gonna, you know, this is gonna be a little tough. It's gonna be sort of, we're gonna have a honeymoon period in the beginning, I think, where she's sort of, you know, has the thing of, well, I'm not looking over my shoulder anymore, that's nice, you know, I can I can go and have a meal or, you know, do things that you've never seen Nikita do. But then at the same time, you know, I think shortly into the series, I think she's going to be a little bit like, she's kind of got a boss now. You know, Nikita's always been her own boss, so I think that may become an issue, you know. She's still got people that, she's got people to answer to now, and she, you know how she does things her own way, so... I, I don't know if that's going to be totally. She seemed like she wanted to have a personal life at the beginning of last season. Totally. So has she been up on that? No, not at all. And, and what's nice is we're gonna, actually going to get into that. And um, we're going we're gonna to do something. We're going to kick this season off with something that you would never expect to happen in the first episode. Which in true, you know, Craig style uh, is sort of the way they do things. It's great. So we're talking like a wedding? Uh, oh God, if there's, if there's a wedding on Nikita, I quit. No weddings, no babies. It's not happening. <laughs> Unless somebody like, you know, elopes like in a cool way. But I was just like, no, no one's getting pregnant and no one's gonna be getting married. No, this is not a soap opera. <laughs> But will there at least be shower scenes in this problem? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Who started that? Who did that, that, that back in <laughs> um, Yeah, as somebody was talking about, but I think that happened, like we were talking about on set, what the worst thing would be. And I think it started from there. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> So as, as an actress, going through all these different seasons where things are totally different, has yeah. that made you grow as a person? What, mm. what do you like about that? Yeah. Huge. Like, I didn't really understand how TV would change me as a as a performer. And um, I've heard, I've read, you know, uh, interviews um, of you know film actors who have gone to TV and said, well, you know, it's so nice to grow a character over an amount of years. It's it's a whole different experience because you don't you never leave it behind. You know, it's always a part of you. And I, I, it sounded all, you know, good, but when you're actually doing it, it is exactly that. It's, it's sort of this long-term relationship you're in with, with another person that you're creating. And it's, it's this bizarre, very sort of fulfilling thing that, that you don't get from movies. I mean, obviously you get something else from movies, but yeah, I do love it. Now that she's kind of in a power position responsible for government's kind of hierarchy level, is her wardrobe going to change? <laughs> it really is. <laughs> See, what's exciting about the wardrobe this year is that Nikita gets to wear everything now. You know, she's not now, she's on missions, but she's also in division. So she's, you know, corporate as well sometimes. But then we get to see her own, maybe, because now she gets to choose, she gets to go, oh, I'll wear that jean and that t shirt today. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> she might be going to a yoga class or a, or a copy and she's never done any of that so and then we're going to see her um, on missions and we're also going to see her playing characters you know on missions within missions and so there's going to be a lot we're, uh, the costumes are let's let's put it this way is very excited about this season <laughs> yeah, so. so is any of her style your style uh, kind of. I mean, I feel like you can't totally separate it. I mean, when I'm going through a rack, <laughs> right? It's sort of like, I love that. And she always goes, for you or for her? For you or for her? She always says that to me because I'm always going, I'm take that. That's for her. So it's fun. But yes, I think that I definitely influence her. But but I also, at the same time, um, I'm very sort of like, I, I do, I'm very conscious of that. I don't want to, you know, and I'll even, like my hair right now is so light. And people are like, are you going to do that for the show? I'm like, no, this is for me. Because I get to be myself for two months. Right, nice highlights. <laughs> yeah, thanks. And then I got to go back to, to Nikita, so it's going to change. But this is, you know, I, I try to differentiate. What about the living situation? Is she going to live in division? Is she going to set up house? No, she's got a house. We're not going to see it right away, but her and Michael might have a house. They might have a house. Pick a fan? <laughs> <laughs> a really high one with uh, with the barbed wire. <laughs> Is it just for them or are they going to be wiping everybody else? Well, we definitely, um, Craig and I discussed this, we thought it was so funny. We were like, I said, so, you know, living condition standards, this, that, and the other. And he said, well, yeah, you know, we'll figure it out. I go, they're not bunking. <laughs> it's a freaking couple. None of this, like, seven people to a house thing anymore. You know, that's not happening. He goes, no, no, that's not happening. It was like, that's not 
not happening. He's like, it's not happening. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. Because it's true. We've all been running. So we're stacked up in like one house, you know, whether it be three, four, you know, seven people by the end of the season. And now everybody's got to, you know, if Alex and Sean decide to do something together, they may have their own thing and we have our own thing. And it's just creepy. Well, last season, uh, Nikita and Amanda kind of had, they almost killed each other a few times. Yeah. And now, um, you know, Amanda was gone for a little while and she's back. And now with Nikita kind of taking over Division in a way, of course, I'm assuming Amanda's not going to be happy about that. Can you talk a little bit about the dynamic between the two of them? You're absolutely right. I mean, the thing about, speaking of, she walks in the room. Um, <laughs> the thing about Amanda being pissed off, um, that's, that's so scary. Because Amanda is not like Percy. In the third season, you know, Percy had an agenda and Nikita got in the way. But Percy's agenda mattered more than Nikita did. He just wanted her out of the way. He was sort of pissed that she was always screwing things up for him. But it was a lot. It was very male. It was a lot less personal. It was just sort of like, get in my way, you're dead. If you don't, you know, whatever. This is two chicks now, right? And she is mad as hell. And her only objective is to hurt Nikita. And she's going to do that any way she can. She has no other agenda but to hurt Nikita. And that's very, very different from Percy. So she's a, she's a massive threat this season. Yeah. And the fact that she has Fox and Ari is a big thing, too. Very big. Is Nikita reporting to the government? In, this, in the third season? She is. <laughs> so they'll be a little more legit. And... Well, because Ryan Fletcher is now heading um, Division. You know, this is somebody that she she obviously has a great friendship with and she respects, but um, he's also very square. So I foresee some uh, a little bit of this just because she's just so used to doing things her own way. And I, and I, and I, I think it's going to be a little hard for her to take direction from someone or for, for somebody to say to her, well, that, that, that's not the way we do things. This is the way we do things because I have to report back to the government. And Nikita's like, so? You, you know, it's sort of that thing. Yeah. yeah, and so now it's, it's a different dynamic because she, 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 they really are working together. And he, he really is um, answering to the government. And there's something actually in season three that Ryan's holding back from Nikita that we'll find out. Uh, during the season that is is legitimately why he has to worry about the way she does things. Yeah. And she's so reckless that she's not gonna listen to it. With the vision not as the enemy anymore. You know, we've used to the tension level up here. Is it gonna come down or are they are they mm -hmm. have found ways to oh, no. make it as exciting? We have some bad ass bad guys <laughs> this season. It's so exciting. We're gonna do a lot more standalone episodes which is nice, and we're going to bring in, you know, some really quality guest stars again. We've got um, Devin Sawa back as a regular, which is really exciting, and Noah Bean, who plays Ryan Fletcher, is also a regular this season. So we've got, like, a nice group of boys, and we're going to have some some adversaries for them for sure, and, and for, for my character as well. So, and, yeah, it's going to be good. Can you talk a little bit about what you did in your hiatus? Oh, I'll tell you what I didn't do. Rest. <laughs> did you see my photo? Did you see the photo? I, we had it in our, in our uh, iPad edition, and I saw it while I was here. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Have you guys seen the whale shark photo? You're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I died when I saw it, and I did it. Um, I just got, I was in May Comic Con because I was um, in Cancun and I was diving with whale sharks off the coast of uh, Mexico because I work with a group called Wild Aid, uh, an endangered species protection group and I'm on a big campaign to stop shark finning. And so anyway, we did these photos um, of me diving with these whale sharks, you know, for publicity to bring attention to the, to the, to the cause. And they're, I mean, they're just, it's, they're the biggest fish in the ocean. I mean, they're, they're brilliant. I mean, it's like, it's like swimming with the dinosaur. I mean, I, I haven't done that. <laughs> I'm going to compare it to you, but I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that that's what it was like. So, but I, I haven't rested a lot, I have to say. I, I've been promoting, I've been, I've been around, I've been uh, internationally promoting the show, and they're sort of a season behind, and trying to forget what I know, and you know what I mean? Still promote the show. So, like, so season one, episode four, I'm like, season one, episode four. <laughs> Like, ah, like a reference book. <laughs> I've forgotten all the details. Well, going so, along with that, like how how far into the season do you know? Do you know what's going to happen? Do they have a plan for the end of the season, and how hard is that to kind of keep straight where you are now, mm. what you're shooting, and, and everything like that? I, I I know a lot. I know a lot. Um, but uh, season three, unlike season one and two, I, I don't. I, I don't think they think Craig knows how the season's going to end, but I think that they're doing that on purpose. They kind of want to see. I think they're they're doing like a a little 
like writer's test, <laughs> like writer's <laughs> workshop test to see um, if, if, if giving a set goal at the end of the season restricts them during the year or if they just kind of opened it up and let it flower and move in different directions if you could get things that, you know, possibly didn't happen in the first two seasons. So the writers are excited. They're scared because <laughs> it's nice to have a goal. But um, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But, but yes, I do know a lot, and I, I try to... Um, be present so that it doesn't affect sort of what's in front of me. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, you gotta know certain things just to be able to deepen the experience. Well, I was wondering, like, when did you know how the last season was going to end? Like, I knew it for a long time. For a long time. <laughs> and what did you what did you think when you first learned how what was where the season was going to end and what that would mean for um, where the series could go well, after that? Well, I, I knew where we wanted to go in season three. So that means in season two, somebody big's got to die, <laughs> right? And and we already picked who we were losing, and and so that was known. Um, Craig and I had talked about it, and obviously the writers knew. But um, it was it was good. It was just sort of one of those things where. I knew what Nikita's arc was going to be and where she was going to end up emotionally and mentally at the end of season two, and that was going to set us up to for season three. And and so so those things are kind of important for me because this overarching. I mean, when you do twenty three episodes, the arc is long. You know, arcs are supposed to do this. Ours do you know sort of this, and it's 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 hard to keep going at that level if I if I don't have my convictions in order. So to speak. Having done the role for so long, is there anything of Nikita that you and um, have you learned anything from Nikita? Uh, I I do I do learn from her. She's incredibly patient, which I sort of admire. I mean, I love that she. There are things where she'll respond to a situation and I'll think, I'd be pissed off by now. You know, <laughs> I would have, you know, <laughs> I would have probably said something by now, but she, Nikita lives in this place of sort of guilt slash compassion. And I think that her, she, she always puts other people first and I, I really, I do, I do love that about her. And it's not just about putting herself first to, to, to better the situation and make it feel good. I mean, she genuinely cares about people and about herself. And, and I, how can you not admire that? That's a good, that's a good trait. Going back earlier to what you said about the international view mm -hmm. of the show, um, so what, what do you think about that? Do you think that's really what saved the show? That's totally what saved the show. <laughs> <laughs> we have very low ratings in the U.S., you know? It's just sort of like, it's one of those things. I mean, listen, we're on Friday night, which is not exactly, that's not exactly enough. People are like, oh my God, I'm going to buckle down on a Friday <laughs> night at 9 o'clock. You know, people are out, you know. But then again, you know, a, lo a lot of our audience on a network like this is a younger audience that does buy episodes, download episodes, and, you know, watches things on their phone and on their computer. So, again, it's, the, you know, it's, it's, so it's that. Um, but um, I always sort of felt like the Keto was a show that you had to find. And because we're not a show that's typical for this network, um, I didn't think it was going to happen right away that people were like, I'm tuning into the CW as a 45-year-old man. Like, I mean, that doesn't happen overnight. It just doesn't happen. Even though the show warrants that. But it's, you know, you've got this wall because it is marketed to younger women. And, um, but yes, I, I do, you're absolutely right. I believe that, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I absolutely believe that. And, um, and I'm really appreciative of the international community for saving our ass. It's kind of great. Actually, I need pregnant. to take her, guys. Okay. What? And I didn't even have to get pregnant. <laughs> Mary! <laughs> so, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.